Hi everyone, my name is Olotim. I'm one of the creators of Atlas. And in this video, I want to talk to you about how you can manage your database schema with Terraform using plain SQL. If you're not familiar with Atlas, it's an open source schema migration or schema management tool that's very popular in the industry and is used by many companies. When we started developing Atlas, we noticed there was a huge gap, a very loud uh, disconnect between the way modern organizations manage their cloud infrastructure using infrastructure as code tools like Terraform and the way that they manage their database schemas. In this video, we're going to present the Atlas Terraform provider and show how it can be used to create a bridge between infrastructure as code and database schema management. Okay, let's start with a demo showing how we can manage a MySQL database using Terraform in plain SQL. So suppose we have a database running. In reality, this is probably something like an RDS instance on your cloud account, but for this demo, we're just going to use a local MySQL container running. And let's say we want to apply this uh, SQL schema to this um, database that we have running locally. We're going to start by uh, installing the uh, Atlas Terraform provider from the Terraform registry and configuring it with the dev URL. You can read more about this in the Atlas documentation. The next step, we're going to load the, um, the schema from our uh, SQL file. We're loading this from a file. It's located uh, relative to our main module. The file name is uh, schema. SQL. Once we have loaded this schema into Terraform, we can now define an Atlas schema resource to actually manage the database that we want. And we're going to use this uh, URL. This is running locally, and we created with the uh, schema called my app and we're going to take the schema that we pulled from our SQL file and provide it to this uh, Atlas schema resource. Okay, with all of this configuration prepared, we can now finally apply our SQL schema onto our database. See, we missed this primary key. And let's now see what happens when you run Terraform Apply. So it's going to read the schema from this uh, data source that exposes a normalized schema for us to use. Once that's read, Terraform will calculate the diff between the current database, which is currently empty, and the desired state, which is the uh, SQL file that we define. As you can see, Terraform produces a plan how to get from the uh, existing state to the uh, desired state. And you see this HCL uh, representation. This is the configuration language that Atlas uses. This was produced by translating or by loading the schema from our SQL file into this normal Atlas form. And as you can see, Atlas tells us what is the exact SQL query is going to run to reconcile between the desired and the current state. Let's see what happens when we run yes. As we can see, the schema is updated. Great. And our schema was applied successfully. Now, if everything went uh, correctly, by reapplying our schema again, we should see no changes because the uh, schema in the database is equal to the schema in our desired state. Great, no changes. Our infrastructure manages matches our configuration. Now, let's see what happens if we add a new column here, a description column, and let's say we add another table called uh, blog posts.
And once we save that, we can now reapply our Terraform configuration. The state will be read by Terraform from the desired state. It is now being read from the database, the actual state, and Terraform will produce a plan to alter the user table to add the description column and to create our new table. Great. We successfully applied a change to our database schema. We started this video by discussing the gap between how cloud infrastructures can be managed with tools like Terraform and how schema uh, changes are generally managed in many organizations. Let's try to review this gap. So with infrastructure as code, everything is declarative. I will provide my tools the desired state and my tools will figure it out. How do we get there? Schema changes in general, an imperative workflow, right? We specify to the database exactly how to get from point A from point B, create this table, alter this column. The second point is that infrastructure as code is all about automation, right? It's about letting tools uh, do things on their own, schedule processes to do things, do uh, procedures in response to events that happen in our uh, code repository. Schema change management, in many cases, is a manual process or a semi-manual process. It's a script that some developer runs just one moment before the deployment sequence starts. In some cases, it is a process that teams actually manually connect to the production database and type in commands to the uh, database shell. Number three, infrastructure as code is a holistic approach to managing things. You describe your entire infrastructure in one uh, place. This is my Kubernetes cluster. This is the database instances that I'm managing. These are the IAM roles, the security groups. All of them are managed in one place and running one Terraform apply provisions everything. With uh, schema change management, schema changes are really fragmented, right? They're not part of this game. They're not part of this party where everything is configured in one place. They are kind of their own thing running one moment before the application provisions or it's a manual step that's not described anywhere, but it just gets done somehow by someone. Finally, infrastructure as code has a self-healing property. If something drifts between the way things should be and the things that they are, this diff will be picked up by Terraform or uh, your infrastructure as code tool next time you try to reconcile them. With schema changes, when stuff goes wrong, it's a very manual and very painful process to manage. Okay, wrapping up. Today, we discussed the huge gap between schema change management and infrastructure as code. And we presented the Atlas Terraform provider, which is the bridge, the bridge that you can use to link between these two uh, workflows in your organization. With the Atlas Terraform provider, you can finally manage your database schema as part of your entire infrastructure. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a plus one and subscribe to our channel. If you wanna discuss this, uh, with me or with someone from the Atlas community, you're welcome to join our Discord server and have a great day.